Hey guys, so this time in this demo we're gonna look like, we're gonna look at, not like, um, advanced CSS. And so these are going to involve a couple of like concepts that are um, beyond what we've looked at so far, but are very important. So the first one is gonna be combined selectors, which means how do we add classes, um, add multiple classes to a single element, or how do we select um, specific elements? Uh, through CSS rules. We're going to look at transitions, how do transitions operate. Um, we're going to look at flexbox, which is a way to um, align elements within, surprise, a box. We're going to look at media queries, um, which is a way to um, target specific rules based on the media on which it, the document is being viewed. So usually this is like desktop versus mobile. And then finally, we'll look at animations, which is a basic way of doing um, keyframe animation in CSS. So let's get started with combined selectors. So I have here two files, our basic index.html and a basic style of CSS. So the first thing that I'm going to do is, as always, body margin zero padding zero. So we're sure where we're setting everything and we start with a clean body. Let's say we have a couple of divs. We have div class equals um, first and then div class equals second and then we have inside let's say a p tag that says hello and another p tag that says goodbye. So there are different ways that we can select hello, goodbye, or different rules that we can apply to our first div or our second div. Let's open up our index.html. We have our hello, we have our goodbye, all good. So let's say I want to have one div that is um, that has a background blue and the um, p tag inside is going to be black, the color black, and then the second one is going to be um, background red and the p is going to have a different color. So what you can do in CSS is that you can do things like this. You can do you select first and we're going to say background color blue and dot second background color say orange instead. I refresh it and first and second oops it doesn't work because I forgot to link the CSS. So I do style.css, I go back, I refresh, and now I have our blue and our red. Our orange. Cool. Now we can do, if we want to select the P without adding a new class, we can do some, something like this. We can say dot first P color white and then dot second P color um, say yellow. Uh, yellow and orange is going to be bad. Green. We refresh and we see how the P tag, how they actually do change. Right, one is uh, white, the other one is green. So the way that you select these is um, this rule selects every p tag inside any um, div that has the class first. So it's only going to apply to this guy. And then the second one selects every p tag inside any any element that has the class second, which is going to apply to this guy. So you can sort of like chain um, rules with this particular syntax. So you put like selector, space, selector, space, another selector. That's one way of doing it. Now let's say we actually want to have both of our um, divs 
to have a um, padding of 10 px of 10 pixels. So we could write a rule like this, right? We could say just like div padding 10 pixels, but the problem with this is that in the end, in, in real life, we're going to end up having a lot of, of divs. We don't want all of them to have a padding 10 pixel. We could also write it here and say padding 10 pixel, and then in the first padding 10 pixel. We refresh, and now we see our padding. So far, so good. But this is kind of like always changing, and so if we're not, um, it's not always changing, it's always in uh, multiple places. So if we want to change this to, let's say, like 15 pixel, or like sort of tweak it to move between 10 and 15 and 20, um, we have to remember to change it everywhere. So a way that we can use selectors to make our lives easier is by adding commas. So we can say dot first, dot second, padding 10 pixels. We go back, we refresh, and it looks exactly the same thing. But now what this means, and I, if I want to change the padding on all these elements, I only need to change it in one place. So I can do 50 pixels here, refresh, and now we have 50, 50 pixels. Right. So spaces select ele select elements within other elements, and then commas um, apply the rule to all the selected elements. So we can add more commas, and then p, and then div, and so on and so forth. Um, one of the patterns for some of these rules is to have something that's called like. Um, no, actually, this is it for selecting with commas and selecting with piece. The last thing about um, uh, selection in CSS is that you can actually add multiple classes in here. You can say first and then border and then second border. And what we can say now is we can just say dot border and guess what? It's going to have a border two pixels, solid, black. Refresh, and now we have those elements that have a border, right? And that becomes kind of convenient because whenever we want to have a border on any kind of our element, we can just add the dot border class. So let's say on this p tag, we want to say class equals border, we refresh, and now this guy has a border here. Okay. So all of these um, classes, you can have as many as you want, as long as you put uh, a space in it. So one of the, the patterns of this is usually people have um, a class that's like left and one that is right. And what that does is just one simple thing, dot left, guess what, float left. And then dot right, guess what, float right. And we refresh, and now we have one on the left, one on the right, and whenever we want to have those divs, um, any kind of element, go on the left or go on the right, we just have to write the right class or the left class, like here or there. Yep. So that covers combined selectors. Um, we can select child elements. Can select multiple, multiple, multiple elements with a comma, and we can add multiple classes in the HTML. Cool. Okay. So now, let's say we want to have, um, we want to look at. But let's say we are going to look at transitions. Um, Transitions are a way to decide how a value should change to another value in CSS. Um, so let's say right now both of our divs are going to have a width of or a height of 200 pixels. Height 200 pixels. Okay. And then I'm going to add a JavaScript 
So script.js. That JavaScript is going to change the height of our, C of our div. Um, on the div, when I click on click equals um, extend height, that's the function in the JavaScript we're going to call. We are not going to forget to add our script tag, script.js. And we need now a function in our script that says function extend height. Um, and what this is going to do is we're going to extend this guy, right? So in here, we're going to say this, because this is going to refer to this guy. So this, this, is this div. And here, we're going to say element, so that this word here same as this word here, um, which itself refers to this guy. Okay, so if I say element dot style, actually let's do, let's just do a sanity check to see how it works. Console log element. So when I click, I'm going to see in my console an element. Okay, go back, I refresh, I open my developer tools, click on the console, of this and I click on the blue guy and then I see the HTML element here. Sweet. So now I can manipulate this directly. So I'm gonna say element dot style dot height equals five hundred or yeah, five hundred pixels. Okay. I go back, I refresh, and now it adds five hundred pixels. What if I want it to be like smooth? Because we always want something to be smooth, right? I'm gonna go to CSS and I'm gonna say, hey, so those divs, whenever there's a transition, how do we handle that transition? And so it kind of goes in three ways. It says like duration and then property and then um, type. Or it's also called easing. So duration, we want transition to di to last over like 1.0.5 seconds. We want only the height property to be affected. So if we change the height, the transition applies. If we say we change the width, the transition doesn't apply. And then the easing is how what is the curve of the transition. So you could have things like linear, which means it just grows linearly in a straight line. You could have things like Ease in, which looks kind of like a power of two curve. Um, ease out, which looks like a logarithmic curve, so like very fast at the beginning and then slows down towards the end, and so on and so forth. Let's stick with linear for now to see how it works. I refresh, and now we know that um, any height uh, transition is going to happen over half a second in a linear fashion. I click. Transition like this. Okay. If I want it to be over, let's say, two seconds, I refresh. It's going to take two seconds. Similarly, for let's say, like, if we do ease in, so it's going to be like a power of two, it goes slow at the beginning and fast at the end. Slow and faster. And then out is the opposite. Start slow, start fast, and then slow down towards the end. Right? So this is only if we care about one property. We can also just say all. Right? This all means that any property is still going to work. So if I want to change, let's say, I'll say instead that the opacity is now equals to zero. It's going to make it disappear slowly, right? But if I go back and I say height here, then the transition doesn't apply to opacity anymore. Okay, so most of the time you might want to have all. If you do want to change the, your element in different ways, you can have a bunch of different transitions. So let's say we have one height and 
one for opacity, and we want the opacity to last one second. Okay, and maybe let's say easy, so it goes slow at the beginning. I go back here, and I'm gonna do, I'm gonna affect both. So I'm gonna set the opacity to zero. And I'm gonna set the height to 500 pixels. And I refresh. And so you see that the height here was overwritten by the, um, uh, by the opacity. So you can only either choose one or choose all. In which case we go back. And then now the opacity is going to be the same. Right? So opacity and height change at the same rate in the same fashion. In this case, it changes over one second and then ease in function. That's all you need to know about transitions. You need to apply. You don't need to like specify it in uh, CSS from which to where. This is what animations are for. We're going to look at in a second. But this is handling the rule that, oh, if any of your attributes change, if your height changes or if your opacity changes, this is how you change it. So you change it over one second and then ease in fashion. Sweet. So now let's switch gears a little bit and let's go to Flexbox. So Flexbox is a way for us to align things um, on the same row, which has been notoriously, notoriously annoying to do in CSS. So let's make first a row. Let's get rid of all these guys. And we need to have sort of like two elements. We need to have a container, I call this container. And then other ones called like uh, inside, let's call it inside. I'm gonna put that this guy is gonna be number one, two, three, four, let's take four of them. Three, four. Okay, refresh, let's see what it looks like. One, two, three, four the side here. Okay, let's make them a little bit nicer. So all of this we comment out and then we're gonna say that all of the ones inside are going to be width 200 pixels, height 100 pixels, font style um, Text align center, text si uh, font size 48 pixels, and we're going to add a border to make them obvious. Two pixels, solid black. Okay, one, two, three, four. Sweet. Because these are divs and they're display block, they all stack on top of each other. If I change it to display inline block, then they're going to be all next to each other. Okay, but what if I want to make sure that they take all the available space on that row, the top row? This is what Flexbox is for. And we're going to uh, use Flexbox on the container class, like the class that's on top of it. We're going to do dot container display flex. And so now you see that all the elements are like tightly next to each other. Let's do another border so we can see what's going on with this guy. 2px solid black. And let's do a little bit of padding. So we're going to have like 10 pixel padding all around. Okay, so this is our container. What if we want those to be like actually not in column, in row, but in column? Then um, we just do flex direction, and we either have column, column reverse, row, row reverse. So by default, it's going to be row from left to right. 
if we want to accommodate um, scripts that are from right to left, then we can do row reverse, refresh, and then we have one, two, three, four on the opposite side. And then you guessed it, if we do column, then it's going to appear as a column. Cool. So now that we have these, we also want those to be sort of like evenly spaced. To do that, we're going to do justify content. And we have a bunch of different options. So center means they're all going to be centered. Refresh, they're all like still next to each other, but at the center of the box. If we want to have space around, then it's going to evenly distribute the space around all these elements. So we still have space on the left side and on the extreme right side. And then if we do space between, then it's going to get rid of the space on the extremes and just have space in between. Refresh. Space is gone on the extreme, and we just have space in between. If, for some reason, our elements become bigger than the width that we have available, let's say something crazy like 1200 pixels, we refresh, then it just maxes out so that they're all evenly distributed. Okay, Whether we're at 1200 or 2400 or 10 million, it's just going to limit to the width of the parent element. These are the basics of Flexbox. Um, there are links on the website to look at uh, Flexbox a little bit further. Um, and then you can do fancy things like have one of the elements that take more space, one that take less, and so on and so forth. Um, the last thing that I would like to show you is that Flexbox also allows us to order things. Um, so we can say this one is going to be first, and then second, and then third, and fourth. And now I'm going to add all those classes saying dot first, order, and this guy's going to be one. Dot second, order two, dot third, order, you guessed it, three, and dot fourth, order four. Refresh, things are the same. But now with Flexbox, we can actually say, well, actually, um, if you had, say, four icons and you think that the second icon would look better all the way to the left, you don't actually have to replay, rechange all of your CSS and copy-paste and like possibly miss out on like closing tags or opening tags. We can just say, well, the second is going to go first, and the first is going to go second. And we refresh. And now two is here, and our one is here. So Flexbox is a very powerful way to align elements and to make sure they take as the, as much space as possible, or as much space as you want, inside a particular row. That's for the basics of Flexbox. And now let's look at media queries. Media queries are a way to change the style based on the size of the screen. Change the style. Is that readable? Yeah, kind of. Ta-da! Sweet. Media queries are kind of magic. Um, I've been doing media queries for a while. I'm still not super good at it. And I always have to like either copy and paste some like templates or look it up again and again. But essentially, they kind of work like that. Uh, let's get rid of all of these. Let's get rid of these guys. And we're going to say div main div. And this guy is just going to have main. And we're going to say that your color is red, width 100 pixels, and height 100 pixels. Or let's say actually like, yeah, 500. 
crash. And I didn't put the class main. Hmm. Why is this not? Why is height? Oh, background color, not color. Because color is for text, and we don't actually have text. And so this is why we didn't see anything. Refresh, and our div is here. Cool. So what if we actually, this is horizontal because I'm on, des I'm on a desktop and uh, most of the content is going to be horizontal. What if we wanted to become vertical when the screen becomes smaller? This is where media queries come in. And you write them like this, at media. And then in parenthesis, we sort of like check for a situation. So for instance, we're gonna say we're gonna say max width is 500 pixels, which means again, like this is when I'm not quite sure. Max width is the part where if your screen is smaller than 500 pixels, then the rules that you write here are going to apply. And this is kind of like a new sub CSS, so we have to rewrite dot main. And we want our background color to be blue. So let's refresh. And now it's red. And now we're going to resize our window. Resize, 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 resize. And we get to blue. So this is the part. This is 500 pixels, right? And then I guess crazy enough, we said width equals 500 pixels. That was completely a coincidence. And so you see that when we hit the size of the div, it becomes blue. So what that means is that we can instead say, well, stay red, so we don't change the background color, but we want the width to become 100 pixels and the height to become 500 pixels. We we'll refresh, we have our normal desktop view, everything's great, make it smaller, make it smaller, make it smaller, and then bam, it aligns like this. So a way to see how it looks on mobile is to toggle the developer tools. And all of those have an icon here, which looks like mobile. And they say responsive design mode. So responsive design is essentially what this is. It means you respond to the screen on which you're looking at the, at the document. So here I'm on a iPhone 6, 7, if I make it bigger or smaller, okay, this is the part where I don't, I don't quite understand because then you also have like device pixel ratio. And so what that means is that like on iPhone 6s, you have twice as much pixels as you think you have. I know. And so right now it says 375 pixels, but because the pixel ratio is two, then we actually have 750, right? Yes, yeah, 750. Um, and so if we say max width 800, 750 is less than 800, and therefore the rule should apply. So we're gonna refresh, and it doesn't apply. It applies for like half a second. But I'm not quite sure. This is the part where in my workflow, I Google media query smartphone. And you have media queries for standard devices. And there's a bunch of um, different websites that offer you the standard media queries, um, which I just copy and paste. There's no point in um, in reinventing the wheel. So can we open this, please? No? Wow, crazy. OK, looks like it doesn't work. Oh, no, iPhones, yeah. Right, and so now we see, OK, we want to target portrait and landscape, or only portrait or only landscape. And so you see that you can start having very complicated media queries where you say, well, I want to be on a screen, on a screen in portrait mode. I want to be on a screen in landscape mode. I want to target what it looks like on iPhone 5, which are like the tiny iPhones, and so on and so forth. And then you also have like Galaxy phones, Google Pixels, blah, 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 blah. 
For now, let's just stick to regular one, iPhone 6 6s. And we're going to paste it. Actually, we're just going to paste this part here. And so it says only on screen, because you have other kinds, particularly you have print also. So if someone is, wants to print a web page, a different CSS applies. Um, the minimum device width is 375, and the max is 667. And the DPR, the device pixel ratio, is 2, which matches exactly what we're seeing here. So I'll make sure it's saved, we refresh, and now the media query applies, right? But if we go to like something maybe bigger, X, XS, then I guess it still applies because the 375 here is still matching. Okay. Um, but if we do Galaxy, then we're at 360, we're not at 375 anymore, and that rule doesn't apply anymore. So usually the standard practice um, is to have sort of like a basic for what is small, what is super small, what is medium, what is large. In general, if you're taking something that looks like the largest possible of those um, devices, so let's see, six, seven, this applies, this applies. Oh, yep, this one doesn't apply. Um, because the device width is at 320 and this is at 375. So instead we're going to say 320 here, so we cover also the iPhone 5, we refresh, and now this is covered as well. Okay, so we're just checking the minimum width, and the maximum width at which it should apply. This is how media queries work. So you select what kind of um, uh, device you're working on, or what uh, in which the rules you want to apply, so screen, minimum width, maximum width, um, height, and then you can have a bunch of other factors. Usually, you might think that it makes sense to have like at the end of your CSS file all of your like media queries. But that actually becomes a little bit complicated when you're like, okay, so where did I change main? Okay, so main is supposed to be this, and then I scroll all the way back down, and you change main here. And so the best way is to say, okay, here we have main on the normal um, device, on the normal view, and then now we write what main should look like on mobile. And then let's say we have another class, dot other class, which would be like background color, I don't know. Oh, it's red. The shortest word, I guess. Um, and then we want to modify another class, and so we would put here dot other class, and we would say background color sign. Okay, so usually having the, the media query right below the normal class allows you to see, okay, this is the normal mode, and this is the media query mode. It's a lot easier to read. And in the long term, it'll save you a lot of uh, headache and trouble. Okay, so that is for media queries. Change the style based on the size of the screen. And for the last part, let's look at animations. Animations are a little bit more elaborate. We're going to keep our main for now. And we're going to get rid of all these things. Uh, yep, main. And we refresh. Close this, and we have our main div. Sweet. The way you write animations is by specifying whether or not a class should have an animation. And then usually you give it like a name and then a duration and then how it um, works over time. And so for instance, we would say animation um, bounce. Then you say how long, how long you want it to take. Let's say two seconds. And then now we need to define what bounce is, right? And so we say at keyframes, and then we need the, we give it the name bounce. And then inside that, we're going to say, well, we know where the first one starts. So you start from, and that's the state at which it starts. 
So if we want to make it bounce, maybe up and down, we're going to start by putting it in position absolute and having top 0px. So it's going to be at the top. So we start from top 0px, and then we get all the way to, I don't know, top 300px. Okay. And so what's going to happen is that main is going to see, hey, I have an animation class. It's called bounce. I need to do it over two seconds. And then it looks up bounce and it says, okay, so I start at 0px. And then over two seconds, at the end of two seconds, I should get 300px for the same top attribute. So let's see how it looks. Refresh. And automatically it bounces. But it doesn't bounce because um, it stops, it does it once, and then it goes back to normal. So we can also add something like animation. Um, which one is it? Direction? What is direction? Yeah. Um, alternate. So you go in one direction, and then you go in the other direction, and then we're going to say, well, do it forever. So this is how many times you want to do it. It's also called animation count, I believe. Iteration count. Yep. So how many times do you do that animation? So for an infinite, um, infinite amount of time, over time, over two seconds, I want to go from 0 to 300 pixels. And then I do alternate, so I go from 300 to 0 pixel. Go back, and then reload. It goes up. It goes down, it goes down, and it goes up. Right. And so now, if I want to only trigger the animation at a particular moment, I can put these guys, or rather these guys, in a separate class. I can say dot animated. I put this here. And so any element that's going to have the animated property or animated class is going to um, trigger that animation. So for now, nothing happens because it doesn't have the animated class. Whenever I'm going to click on main, so on click, trigger animation. And as we saw before, we're going to say this. I'm going to say my script. I'm going to say function trigger animation, the element. I open it and I'm going to say element dot set attribute class and so now it's kind of tricky because we don't want to like set it to just animated we want to set it to main space animated right this is the end result that we want so instead of just saying set the class to animated we're going to say set the class to main animated so whenever I click on the red box it's going to add a new class animated it's going to start animating Go back, refresh, click on it, and it starts animating. Sweet. So this is how animations work. On the one hand, you need to put an animation property, and animation is kind of like the coverall of all these other different kind of animations. So we could say like animation name, bounce, and then animation duration, Two seconds and then animation um, animation iteration iter where is iteration iteration count infinite okay so this guy here is the equivalent of actually this guy here like this this here is one line for all of these guys so I can do this just have the one line, I click, it behaves, and then if I uncomment this, I comment the one line, I just have these guys, I refresh, and I click, it behaves the same way. Right, so if you're in doubt, you can use every single separate um, attribute. If you're comfortable with doing things, um, then you can just all do it in one line. It's kind of similar with border. You could have like border, two pixels, solid, black. We could also have border, radius, two pixels. Border, um, color, black. 
border style. Oops. Dash dot blah 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 blah. Or solid. Is there solid? Yeah. Okay, so these three guys are equivalent to these three guys. Now we have a border. Cool. So any CSS property can be animated. It could also be that instead of having top, we could have opacity. And the opacity would go from 0 to 1. I'll refresh, I click, and then it pulsates over and over. So let's say you want to have like maybe a, a website that has a broadcast or um, some music is playing and you want to have like a little like slightly fading pulsating um, button, then maybe we can do it like from 0 0.5 to 1 and it does it over like 0 0.75 seconds. Ooh. And is there animation duration fill mode? Maybe timing function. This is where we can decide also. Yeah, cubic, blah, blah. Let's do linear. We just want to have a simple linear. Same thing we saw with the transitions. I'll refresh. And now it's just pulsating very simply. And then inside we're going to put, let's say, up on air. And main is going to have the color white. Text align center. Um, font size, I'm going to say 48 pixels, or let's say 50 pixels. And then if I want it to be at the middle of my uh, div, I'm going to take the height of the div and I'm going to say that's the line height of the text. Line height 100 pixels. And now I have a text right in the middle of the div. And maybe we do top, let's say, 50 pixel, left 50 pixels, so that's a little bit away. And if I want to make it more like a circle, then we can have instead border two pixels solid black, we're going to get rid of the border, and we're going to say border radius instead. So border radius sort of like curves out the corners, and so let's see what it looks like with 30 pixels. Okay, yeah. I click on it, and now it's actually, actually actively pulsating, and it feels like maybe there's some music playing, and you're currently broadcasting radio. So these are all the things we looked at. We looked at animations, how you have to like call the animation in, the, in a class, and then how you need to define the keyframes of that animation. We looked at media queries, how you have to um, define what is the width or the height of the screen that you're looking at, the pixel ratio. Um, you can have the orientation, and then you rewrite CSS rules when those queries are matched, so when the, si the screen size matches the query. Flexbox is a way to align objects within a bigger container. So if you want to make sure that all of your objects take as much space as possible, you would use Flexbox. Transitions is a way to ensure that whenever a property changes in CSS, it changes smoothly. And combine selectors in order to like have multiple classes which each take care of a single thing or can apply to multiple elements for more beautiful and more powerful CSS.